Well, thousands of students around the world have walked out of the classroom and gone on strike to challenge politicians to take action on climate change. The strikes were inspired by 16-year-old Swedish activist Greta Thunberg. The last time I checked, there were over 123 countries where there were going to be strikes today and 2,052 places, cities. America and around the globe. What do we want? Climate! Students today went on strike for the climate. Thousands of school students from around the world walked out of their classes to join a global protest against inaction on climate change. This was the scene in Rome, Seoul, Sydney, London, Berlin and more. All cities that have seen thousands line their streets. Welcome, friends. James Corbett here at CorbettReport.com with your edition of Propaganda Watch for this week. And this week I come to you with a little bit of advice for any budding would-be propagandists or social engineers out in the crowd who find themselves in a sticky situation. Namely, you want to really mold and shape public opinion so that it not only accepts but actually embraces an entire makeover of society. The organized habits and opinions of the masses, the economic model that underpins uh, business and transactions, really everything. You want to strike at the core of what it means to be a human being and what humanity is capable of and the way that it lives on this planet. But you find a little bit of resistance here and there from people who, oh, I don't know, don't want to completely transform their lives and or go into utter impoverishment on the back of your wonderful idea for creating a green utopia. How can you how can you get public opinion to budge on matters like that? Well, I have a handy solution for you. Employ children. Yes, children make perfect propaganda props to use in your propaganda campaign because who can say no to the children? Case in point, I'm sure that most of the people in the audience have heard by now of Greta Thunberg or Alexandria Villasenor or Gene Hinchcliffe or Jamie Margolin or names like this. But if you haven't yet, I guarantee you will be hearing these names in the near future. Who are these people? Of course, these are the leaders of the global youth climate strike march movement, whatever is being drummed up in the mainstream media these days. And actively hyped and promoted in schools and through social media that are reaching more and more children around the world so that they are now motivated to go out and join these climate strikes like what we saw last week with children from all over the world striking for climate change. Won't you old fogies actually do something? Because as you've been telling us for many, many years now, <laughs> the world only has 12 years left. So the world, there is no time. There is no time. We have to do it now or your children are going to suffer. That, of course, is the message that is being used to push this climate change, green technocratic New Deal, utopia, dystopia uh, agenda forward. And that is exactly what is happening. It is children are being used to push this agenda because, well, when they actually try to do things like tax people exorbitantly for their uh, carbon sins, you get things like the yellow vests in France, who are striking because they're mad about inaction on climate change and other things, but they're also striking because of the exorbitant taxes and prices of gas so that they can't even afford to go to work anymore. Hmm, it seems like seems like there may be a fundamental conflict uh, going on within movements like this. And this is some of the tension that the propagandists are facing in this effort to transform society and get them once again to embrace the complete and utter, tra utter transformation of society generally and the impoverishment ultimately of billions of people who are going to be carbon poor in the near future because of the lies that are being pushed by the climate agenda. What better way to do that than with children? And that is something that came to the fore in American politics very recently. Sci some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do Senator, if is this doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with these consequences. The government and is supposed to be for the people and by the people and all you know for the people. You know what's interesting about this group is I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here, 
and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. I've gotten elected. I just ran. I was elected by almost a million vote plurality. And I know what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe people should listen a little bit. That was a video that was recently trending on Twitter and other social media that was posted originally by something called the Sunrise Movement, which organizes youth climate action and, in that case, confronted Senator Dianne Feinstein on her not enough action. Why isn't she taking action on climate change? And this is the theme that you will notice more and more in recent times, and I, as I say, into the future, this is going to be more and more of a theme of children rising up against the old fogies who are killing the earth. Because children are pure, children are innocent, children are t telling it like it is. They don't have all the filters that we have as adult human beings and all of the baggage that comes with that. They're just calling out the emperor with no clothes. You say the world is going to end in 12 years. Well, that means before I'm even into full adulthood, the world's going to be over. That's not good enough. You have to do something. So these children who have been propagandized their whole lives into this climate cult and who believe every word of it are simply taking the pronouncements that are propounded in the mainstream media every single day about the world only has 12 years left or whatever the ticking time bomb is reading this particular year. Uh, and they're just taking it literally. Well, if that's true, then this is terrible. We, this is emergency. This is crisis mode. We have to go into crisis mode. And this is the way this is being pushed right now, because children, it's not only think of the children, it's look at the children. Look, the children themselves are rising up. Something's clearly wrong with the system when the children themselves are rising up, right? So this is playing on some very extremely deep-seated psychological vulnerabilities, shall we say, of people who are trained when children are crying for help, you better help the children. So that's a pretty basic psychological button that is being pushed there. And of course, the narrative that is propounded along with this is that, look, these children are doing it themselves. No one's pushing them onto the stage. No one's no one's doing anything for it. Th these are children who are doing it. They're striking. They're doing all these types of things. They're organizing this on social media. It's always this story about, look at this plucky 13-year-old girl who just organized this national climate strike movement in the United States, or et cetera, et cetera. These are the ways these stories are being pushed. Now, I don't want to go too far into talking about the individual children who are being pushed to the forefront of this movement right now, because I have no doubt whatsoever that these children are sincere in their beliefs and truly believe they are doing what's right and they're doing... I'm not questioning their sincerity or their integrity on these matters. No, no, no. That's for people like Angela Merkel to do. And these hybrid, so this hybrid warfare is something that is very difficult to see. And it's always attacking the weakest link in the chain. And in, in, right now in, in Germany, for example, uh, the children are um, taking to the streets against climate change. But the fact that after all of these um, children come up with this idea without any influence from the outside to wage this um, campaign, well, I am doubtful uh, whether it's only uh, their own initiative. No, 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 no. You see, I'm, I'm not one of those crazy conspiracy theorists like Angela Merkel, who believes that Russians are secretly controlling a legion of children to rise up and participate in climate strikes or any crazy conspiracy nonsense like that. No, I don't, I don't push that. I, I, in fact, quite the opposite. I, I have no reason to doubt the integrity of these children and they, that they believe what they are saying, that when these 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds get up there and they're giving these impassioned speeches about how the house is on fire, what are we going to do about it? I'm sure that they truly believe that. Um, as any good propagandist will know, the best people to propagate your message are the people who truly believe it, the true believers who aren't acting, they're not putting anything on, they truly believe this. And who could believe anything more fervently along those lines than a child who has been propagandized since they were born and has been fed it in the school system all their lives that 
the, the the world is burning. We only have X number of years left, whatever the ticking time bomb says this week, as viewers of The Corbett Report will know that X number of years left has changed many, many times over the past several decades. And uh, many, many deadlines have come and gone. But here we are again. Now, I think they're saying 12 years left is the, uh, the ticking time bomb readout they're using this week. But I'm sure that'll change by next week. Anyway, I'm sure these children believe it because, as I say, they've been propagandized themselves their entire life. So now the propagandists are taking those who are most deeply entrenched in their propaganda and using them as the mouthpieces, which is doubly brilliant because not only, as I say, are the true believers the ones who are going to push the message most effectively, but also... Again, another basic psychological mechanism. In fact, firing on two cylinders here. One is that, oh my god, think of the children is, of course, the the much parodied, cliched line about any time you want society to do anything, you just say, oh my god, won't somebody think of the children? And that activates the parents to go, oh, is there a threat to my children? Well, I better take care of this. But also, now it's doubly beautiful because it's also firing on, these are the children themselves that are crying for help. I mean, what normal, normal normally wired human being doesn't respond on some level when they see children in distress crying for help. Well, we got to help them. What are we going to do? This is playing on some very deep-seated psychological mechanisms. I am sure the children believe it, but I'm sure they have no real understanding of what part they are playing in what exactly international economic and political order is coming into view on the back of the propaganda that they are parroting. This is where things get a little bit more, well, real and complex. And so to sort through that, I don't want to go specifically all out into the climate um, version aspect of this type of propaganda. There's much to be said about it. And don't worry, we will be talking about it much more in the future. But uh, I will direct you to a couple of sources. If you are wondering, how can this work? How can these children who really believe what they're saying be... Uh, wielded and directed like convenient props, weapons even, info weapons to roll out against the population, uh, battering rams to um, ram down the walls, that the mental barriers that people have erected against certain issues. Uh, I'll direct people to a couple of great resources. One provided by Corbett Report member Ian Davis in the Cor- Corbett Report comment section recently to uh, a blog in this together.com. It's hyphens in between the words. I'll put the link in the show notes, of course, uh, that has a recent article, Youth Strike for Globalist Propaganda, that talks about Greta Thunberg and the organizations that she- she's associated with and how they came to be, and then who's coordinating this climate strike and some of the big NPICs, non-profit industrial complex uh, members that are participating in this and pushing this at the global scale. Again, these types of things do not spontaneously happen because a couple of 13-year-olds start a Facebook group. There are massive amounts of money and uh, time and funding and political and media influence that are helping these movements to come about. And uh, Ian does a good job in this article of explaining that and connecting some of those dots. So I'll throw the link into that. I will also mention for the second time here on Propaganda Watch, the manufacturing of Greta Thunberg, a an in-depth six-part investigative report on wrongkindofgreen.org that goes through a lot of the details. And there are a lot of details uh, out there to connect the pieces of some of these players, these organizations, who they are, where they come from, uh, who are the leaders of these organizations, what boards do they serve on, how are those boards related to each other, and how do they relate to what's happening at the youth strike level and all of that. It's a, it's a complex story, but there's a lot of details to go through, but uh, I, I suggest you do start going through it because it's an incredible story. But as I say, today we're focusing on the, the bigger idea in general of children being used to push political ideologies. I don't know about you, but I am quite glad that I did not have a global platform to be speaking whatever I was fervently, passionately interested in or or one believed when I was 13 years old, because I don't know, but I'm assuming I would agree with very little of what I what it was I believed or thought at that time. Um, before, well, yes, before I was even out of the school, let alone really able to cogently put together um, that my thoughts and thinking on it on various subjects. Of course, people are at that young impressionable age are going to be a product of the system that they're brought up. And then of course, in our modern developed industrialized world, that's going to be the school system, which of course brings with it many of its own biases. And um, it's, 
an art to avoid being indoctrinated, or at any rate, it does take some time to deprogram after leaving that system. So whatever I believed when I was 13 years old, again, I'm glad I didn't have some sort of international megaphone to go blasting that to the world, because I would probably be embarrassed by it uh, all these decades later. In the, By the same vein, I'm imagining that a lot of the children who are being handed these international platforms to speak to millions of people around the globe may come to regret some of the things that they're saying. And this is one of the many sticky subjects that we're, as a society, starting to think about, oh, maybe we should start to address these things, these children going on social media and, and how do they, how do they, they're leaving a trail behind them that they can't even possibly imagine how this is going to be used, uh, five or ten years or however many years down the road when they're looking for jobs or whatever it is, trying to get ahead in the world, and suddenly they have this baggage of all these things that they've done in the past. So that's a disturbing aspect of this. Um, and I, I don't take that lightly. I think it is extremely important. And I take that on both sides of this equation, because let's not pretend, just as the other week we were examining positive propaganda and the concept, well, can we have positive propaganda? And we looked at that video about the uh, the cancer and environmental causes, rather, rather than just focusing on these treatments that keep you perpetually sick at the expense, of course, of big pharma, why don't why don't we look at environmental causes and things that you can do to actually help maybe prevent cancer from forming? Well, th this is positive propaganda, and I pointed people to that video. If you did go and watch that video, you will notice there are a number of children, 12, 13 years old, I don't know, something in that range, talking about uh, w what you can do and what are some of the environmental causes of cancer. And that was one of the misgivings that I had about that propaganda, because, again, I think it's pushing children... As convenient spokespeople, I mean, who's going who's gonna to get angry or really resist what a, a child is saying? Uh, I think that it, again, plays on the same things and in a way that is equally reprehensible to the way that children are being forefronted in the climate strike movement and all of this. Uh, we've seen it before with anti-GMO. This 13-year-old girl speaks so brilliantly about anti-GMOs. Well, okay, yes, but what will she think and say five years from now or ten years from now? Uh, should we be putting this sort of person in, in terms of uh, national television shows and debating scientists on TV and things just because she's an articulate 13-year-old? Again, I have my misgivings about this and the way that this is used. I'm not, I don't have any definitive answers, and I'm certainly not saying, well, I think there should be laws against children speaking out on issues. But uh, it is a phenomenon that is being wielded more and more these days. And as I say, it's particularly coming to home to roost in the climate propaganda movement. So uh, I have my eyes on this generally. I'm interested to hear other people's thoughts out there if you have points of agreement or disagreement on this subject, what the role that you think children can or should be playing in politics and society generally, and in terms of pushing particular political agendas in particular, and the types of, oh, I mean, is this abuse? And if so, what, what can be done about it? Uh, I think there's some extremely important issues here uh, when we're examining propaganda in general. And as I say, there will be some links to some of the specific things that I've talked about here, but I am looking forward to your comments, as always, at CorbettReport.com. Members are invited to log in and leave your comments in the comment section. If you're not a member yet, why not? One dollar a month helps to keep this report going and growing. We're going to leave it there for this week. Thank you very much. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Looking forward to talking to you again very shortly.